The year above you can be on the other side of the world in a week. So any damage that we do to our atmosphere is truly a global issue. Looking at this wind generator graphic, you can see that wind is all around us. Though we can't see it directly, we can feel it and, well, track it as seen here. Of course, we do take advantage of the wind to an extent with wind turbines, but is wind energy actually worth it? Could we power the entire world with just wind? We thought we'd go to one of the countries at the forefront of the wind power movement to find out. Got your passport? Back there. <laughs> Let's get on the plane! <laughs> Okay, so we just landed in Munich, Germany. We're on the Autobahn and we're on our way to the GE Global Research Center where we're gonna meet some incredibly intelligent people advancing science and research. Um, specifically, we're gonna talk to some about the future of wind energy. And we're actually here in Munich specifically, which as a city has pledged that by 2025, we'll be running on 100% renewable energy. The first windmill built for energy was in 1887, but for more than 2,000 years we've been using wind energy to grind grains and pump water, so this technology is old. Nowadays wind turbines are mostly used for power. They don't rely on fuel and emit way less air pollution. As well, power stations and power plants rely on water for cooling, water which us humans need to live, and it's also stuff that's running out. In fact, 14 million liters of water are used every year in conventional ways of generating energy. Meanwhile, wind turbines use none. So how exactly do they work? Okay, so we're here with Dom, who works at the GE Global Research Center. So Greg will be our illustrator. We can use both of these to figure out how exactly do they change lives. Right? So I think one way one could explain it, every one of you has probably seen a fan, right? So we're going to do cooler in summer. I hope everyone's seen right? a fan. Yeah. So what you do usually, you plug it into your power outlet somewhere, you have your fan. Well, imagine it would be a fan and it starts spinning, right? And by that it produces wind, which comes your way. Now imagine it the other way around, we're just reversing it, right? So the wind is coming at your fan, the fan starts spinning the other way, and then would it bring you the electricity back to your outlet. What about the spinning generates electricity? How exactly does that translate into power? Right, so that's almost independent of wind. We have a lot of rotating machinery, whether it's in nuclear plants or gas turbines, coal, whatever right. else you have. You have a generator which has a shaft spinning inside, and which has a, it uses a magnetic field and causes electricity. That could be a gas turbine, or in this case, it's a wind turbine. Right, okay. Yeah. And so then that generated electricity just goes where? Into a home, into right. cities, or how, how does it get cold? Well, most of us don't have them in the bar. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But so that would mean it goes into the grid and then the utility companies distribute it further. Okay, so how much energy do they actually generate? In today's world, wind energy represents around 4% of our consumption, which is a huge difference from the late 90s when a mere 0.1% of our energy came from wind. But if you were to take one wind turbine, would it charge an object like your phone or something a lot bigger like an entire building? It turns out that a modern wind turbine can power over 1,000 homes. And if you want some hot water, it can actually power 28 million kettles. That's a lot of tea. And it's also the equivalent of 16,000 solar panels. Industry experts actually think that by 2050, we could be getting as much as one third of our power from the blowing wind. Of course, wind isn't exactly consistent and depends highly on your location. So how do we make wind energy more efficient? Instead of having uh, individual wind turbines trying to maximize their, their own performance, we're looking at optimizing the total farm performance. So we, we have farms up to 300 turbines. So over in the US, and we have a big farm of 200 turbines here in Europe, so. One of the coolest things that we've sort of realized is not only that the turbines can communicate together, but they're actually collecting so much data. I don't know if we can get it on the camera, but you had showed us a video. Thank God show. smart people exist. <laughs> yeah. So you see the wind farm here, and what you're seeing here, all these black dots are, are wind turbines. You see very low winds, the colors represent the wind speed so blue is low and, and red is high so and, the wind's and now the farm faster. is producing now the farm yeah. is producing oh, wow. and you see these blue streaks behind the turbines those are wakes Mainly so yeah so that blue is showing yeah. the slowed down air. Yeah, yeah yeah so so that's that's the wake and right now things are all fine you know all turbines are kind of seeing free stream wind and now and now this one is being blocked wow. by the wow. first one so what we do now is we we can start easing off on the first one to, um, to create more power for the pair of them. Right. And this one will do it on its own, right? They're all communicating and it, yeah. Like yeah. someone doesn't yeah. have to be like, that is, a, <laughs> that is a that is a farm, a farm control system right. Right. that is looking at the whole farm and is telling turbine one, hey, you need to right. slow down a Crazy. little bit. Yeah, so this is like an yeah. amazing, this so, people here are so smart. They're figuring <laughs> out software and formulas to discover exactly how all these turbines can interact with each other 
what they need to be doing at any instant, or at least that's the goal, right? It's like, what should this turbine do and should this turbine do? Not only the way they're interacting with each other, but with the environment, right? So, and you said that right. this can get, it can increase the efficiency by 1%, but can you explain more like financially so people can see the money? So the value of 1% is hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, and we achieved this in, in just the first instance. There has been some backlash about how wind turbines affect birds and bats, but to put it into perspective, the glass windows on buildings are actually much more detrimental to bird populations. Wind turbines do still affect birds, so moving forward with the placement of wind turbines, it's important that we focus on putting them outside of bird migratory patterns. As for bats, scientists have been experimenting with special types of paint that actually show up for bats during echolocation to help avoid collisions. This is another example of how scientists are continually making wind energy better for the environment. So what about cost? Surprisingly, wind turbines are able to compete with other energy sources when it comes to cost per energy output. Though this has come after years of improvements in efficiency and technology. And chances are, with time, it's only going to get better and better. If you ask people 20 years ago about the internet, about wind power, yeah. about YouTube. <laughs> yeah, about many of these things, they would say, or cell phones, yeah. right, or whatever, they would say, you're crazy, right? But be open-minded, that's my message. Just And revisit your assumptions now and then.